Hey guys, today I'm going to talk to you a bit about security. Primarily going to talk about locks and locking electric bikes, but most of what I talk about today will be applicable to normal bicycles as well. But there's some things that are going to be specific to electric bikes, or at least the electric bikes that we offer. We're going to mostly talk about locks, but we'll also talk a bit about strategies in how to secure your bike and protect it from thieves. Now, we offer a variety of different locks at our shop. We primarily, at the moment, work with ABIS. We've worked with other companies. There's other large companies in the market. One of them is called Kryptonite, uh, very recognized. They have this uh, security insurance or ins security guarantee which uh, on surface value, it seems really appealing, but the challenge is that it doesn't protect against power tools, which really is the way that most locks are broken today in, in modern times. You know, people use angle grinders to cut locks. So uh, I feel like that doesn't really make sense and I'd rather have just good locks that work well and generally just pair it with insurance. I'll get back into the locks, but I just want to mention, I mentioned insurance that we made a, another video talking about insurance. I think this is a really good consideration if you're locking your bike often in less secure areas or if you're using a bike for transportation, you can't always predict where you're gonna lock it. So my strategy in general is to have good locks and to get insurance just to give you that peace of mind. So if you want more info about the insurance, you can check out the video below. And let's talk about locks. So. This here is a U-lock. Uh, this is made by Abis. This is one of their, uh, the, the highest security U-lock that they offer specifically for bicycles. Now they do offer a higher security U-lock that we do sometimes offer in our New York store. Um, it's called the Extreme. This is called the Granite X Plus U-lock. This is the 540. Um, and it's X plus because of the type of key that it uses, it's an X plus key. And they have these different security ratings and this one in particular is, is 15 out of 15. As I said, uh, there is another lock that's actually made for motorcycles and that lock is actually 20 out of 20. So the motorcycle security goes up to 20, bicycle security goes up to 15, at least for ABIS specifically. Um, if you see some of the other locks, like this one, for example, uh, this is a, a 10 out of 15. So that's not gonna offer you as much security. And basically the difference between this lock and say another folding lock that might have a 15 out of 15 is the key size, the type of key that it uses. Uh, the key for the 15 out of 15 is a higher level of security. So this lock is a 12 out of 15. It's a plus lock, so the key is not as heavy duty. And then the actual um, U part of the lock is not as thick, you know? So this is a little bit thicker in comparison. So that's why this has a higher security rating. You're gonna see a difference in weight. Now, each of these locks are available in different lengths as well. And it really depends on what your specific need is, whether you're gonna go with a shorter lock I mean, for my side, I feel like if you can get away with using a shorter lock, it's nice. Uh, something like this, you can almost even put it in your pocket or put it in your belt, or it goes really easily into a small bag or something like that. So I kind of appreciate it. But something that's a bit longer, you might be able to get around more things, maybe even lock two bikes together, uh, something to consider. But I'll talk more about the strategies. I want to just talk about some of the products that are available to secure your bike and then I'll talk about strategies and how to lock your bike. So these are what's considered U-locks. This is, uh, these locks kind of have a relatively long, long history in the bike industry. This is a chain. This chain uh, is pretty long actually. Uh, Abus measures their chains in centimeters because they're a European company, German company specifically. So this is a 140 centimeter, but it also comes in 80 centimeters, 110 centimeters. Uh, the 110 is really the most popular, but something like this is pretty nice, uh, particularly if you have something, uh, a bike to lock, like a cargo bike, for example where you might not necessarily be able to get the frame as close to this like in, you know, immovable object that you're trying to lock to. Now I can lock this very easily with the 140 chain, but if I went to use like an 80 
centimeter, I might have a challenge to do so. Another great thing about the Abus locks is that you can get the same key as your lock and the battery. So uh, on an electric bike, you generally have a battery on there that's locked on. And most of the bikes that we sell use the Bosch motor system. And you can use the same key for this lock as you can for the, the Bosch system. They also make locks for Shimano as well. So uh, that's a good way to go. And basically you can have one key for multiple locks. And say, for example, your bike might not have come with a lock or it came with one lock and you wanted to add additional ones. You can uh, use the code that's on the back of this card here and order additional locks. So we can help you with that if, if you need that. And uh, it's, a, it's a good way to go. The one thing to note in relation to that though is that this is a plus lock and, and currently Abus does make a plus version of their locks as well as a non-plus version, but they don't make the X plus. So if you want this really high security X plus, uh, you can't get a key to life to the bike, uh, but you can get multiple X plus locks keyed to each other. So good thing to note in relation to that. Now these are U-locks, I showed you chains. I wanna show this other type of lock which is growing in popularity and it's what's considered a folding lock. Um, and Abus was really one of the first ones to introduce this style lock. You just open it with the key and then this side kind of pops open and you can use it in a similar, it's, it's kind of almost like in between a chain and a U-lock because it's, it's got these rigid parts to it but they're, they're much longer and it's a little bit more flexible than say a U-lock, which is, which is nice. And then the great thing about it is it folds away real nice and then you can mount it on the bike or easily put it in a bag, that sort of thing. And there's, there's different versions of it. This is the uh, Granite X Plus version. There's a new version that came out relatively recently and we actually carry some bikes that come standard with this lock. Um, and this is the alarm version. So basically the way that this thing works is it has an uh, alarm mechanism and a sensor. So if I unlock it, lock it, fully lock it, and then pull the key out, it's gonna arm. So after a couple seconds, you'll hear it make this noise. So now it's armed. So now the bike's locked up, I walk away. Somebody starts messing with the bike, it's gonna give this warning. Hey, you know, I got an alarm. And then if you keep on messing it, the alarm's gonna go off. I'm gonna turn that off quickly. Hopefully that's not too disturbing on the video, but wanted to give you an idea of what that's like. So in order to store the lock, you actually wanna just put the, just the top notch in. If you try to put the second notch in, which is the fully locked position, you won't be able to fold it. I'll actually just show you what that looks like. If I try to put it all the way in and try to fold it up, you'll see it actually won't fold because it's actually in this arm position. But if I pull it out just a little bit and just put it the part of the way in, I can fold it up. So now it's locked, the alarm's not gonna arm and you can store it away that way. The one other lock I wanna show you is what's called a frame lock. And in conjunction with the frame lock, I have this, this chain. So this bike has a frame lock on it, also known as a cafe lock. In order to lock it, I'm just gonna turn the key and just rotate the lock like that. I can pull the key out. And the nice thing about this lock is I can use it in conjunction with a chain. This particular bike, the Risa Mueller Loads available, it comes with the chain as an option. So something like this, I lock the frame. Now the challenge with that, you know, the frame's locked, but technically somebody could just lift up the rear wheel and wheel it around. But with this chain, I can just go around this pole here and stick it through the frame and then it's secure. Now, I wouldn't necessarily trust this on its own, but it's good for the quick lockups. You're running in the store real quick or you're at a park and the bike's kind of in your sight or you're at a cafe as the name implies and you know, you're know you kind of sitting outside, the bike's there, you just don't want somebody to be able to run off with it. Really the most popular way that people are penetrating locks these days is with the angle grinder, at least these kind of professional thieves. And we actually have a lot of experience with that being that we have our shop in New York and even out here it's, 
in, in Long Beach where we are right now, that's kind of a thing. It's not as much of a thing, um, but unfortunately in some places there seems to be almost this like professional industry of thieves and uh, it's, it's an unfortunate reality. But, uh, you know, it really depends on where you live and what the security constraints are. You know, some places, I realize that I'm talking, you know, from this perspective of being in an area that you really require a high level of security. Um, but, you know, many people, maybe they can get away with just this. I mean, I know I've vis visited many uh, European cities where people don't even use the chain. They just lock the rear wheel and walk away from the bike and they figure nobody's going to, like, try and walk around town with the... Uh, with the wheel lifted up because they'd be very suspicious, but uh, you'd be surprised what people can get away with in big cities, especially in the States. It's, again, it's, it's unfortunate, but that's the reality. So, you know, I think this is probably a good time to get into maybe some locking strategies. As I started talking about that a little bit, as I said, you know, this on its own would work for those quick lockups, but a bike like this, I'd probably use this in conjunction with the heavier duty chain. You can use it with the U-lock or something like that. Now, this particular scenario, I think I'd find a U-lock uh, kind of difficult to use. But a standard bike rack, if I got the frame close enough, I can use this uh, frame lock in conjunction with the chain, and then maybe a U-lock if I really back up the side right into it. Uh, but I probably want a longer one than this. This uh, folding lock, I'd probably have an easier time, especially with the longer one. This one happens to be on the longer side, so that is helpful, but really uh, for cargo bikes specifically, I think not much compares to a chain in the versatility of what a chain can do. But just storing and carrying a, a chain, they can tend to be heavier, especially you know if they're longer. Um, but in this scenario, which, is, which might replicate uh, a more challenging lockup scenario, uh, you can use this U-lock. Basically what I would do is just open this up and lock the frame. Generally my strategy consists of locking the, uh, focusing on locking the frame, particularly on an electric bike where uh, all the most expensive parts are really attached to the frame, including the battery, the motor, and that sort of stuff. So at this point, I'd feel relatively secure about the bike in a like in an area where maybe bike theft is not very high, but there's still other parts on the bike that are somewhat vulnerable, and there's ways to protect them specifically. The rear wheel is secured, but the front wheel is actually still a bit vulnerable. And now this is not as vulnerable as a bike with the standard quick release where somebody can come up with no tools, just open the lever and pull the wheel off. This one does require a tool, but you can make it more challenging by using this part called the hex locks. Now this one, I would keep this standard axle and insert the hex locks. This is what the hex locks does. Basically it's this little insert here. So you just push the key in and instead of you know uh, making this available you use this hex locks drop it in and then somebody can't put a tool in there and it's very secure this way so this is one type of quick release skewer there's many different ones out there this is specific to the suntour fork which a lot of the bikes that we offer come standard with now i find actually many people don't really know how to release this quick release skewer so I feel like it actually improves the security in some ways because of that. But in order to release it, you just basically open the lever and you twist it a little bit to loosen it. And then once it's loose, it can actually push through. So um, I'm going to just tighten it up. But basically, uh, in order to secure this, I'd want to actually replace this uh, front skewer with one of these uh, parts from hex locks. Now this is something pretty unique. I found really this is one of the only parts that works with this Suntour front skewer and it works really well and it keeps it really secure just by keeping the hex locks in there. We just, and we can pull it out just with the key here. So that's really nice. Now this same hex lock system will work on other parts of the bike. And I wanna talk a bit more about that because you know now that we've talked about securing the wheel, which you can do this with the front wheel 
and the rear wheel because there might be scenarios where you don't have uh, the ability to attach a frame lock, say for example on a full suspension bike or, or maybe it just doesn't have those attachment points. But there's other parts like the, the seat post for example, we can check that out. Now this bike has a really convenient quick release seat post clamp which will allow you to really easily adjust the saddle up and down. But the challenge with that, it's also really easy to remove the complete seat post because you can just basically open it up and pull the whole seat post out. Now this is not very secure, so if you did want to make this more secure, what I would do is replace that quick release clamp with one of these more standard clamps. Now this bike actually comes with this style clamp. We have this quick release on here and we use it for our test bikes, but some bikes might come standard with the quick release and you want to go back towards, you know, a more fixed clamp here. The great thing about the fixed clamp is you can use the fixed clamp and then insert one of these uh, hex locks parts. And so in talking about the front wheel, the rear wheel, and just kind of thinking about these parts that can be easily removed from the bike, that's something you might want to consider, especially if you're in one of these less secure areas. Some of the most vulnerable parts about the bike is the front wheel, the seat post, and then actually you can go one step further and start thinking about, say, the, the handlebar and stem, uh, for example. And, you know, it's, it's really sad to think about, like, all the different ways that somebody might be able to uh, steal your bike or steal parts off your bike. But I think really the best way to secure your bike is to think about the ways that somebody might attempt to steal parts off your bike. One of the things that I have seen before, uh, it's not that common, but it can happen, is actually if somebody was to remove the stem, they can actually remove the whole fork off the bike if they just clip the, the front brake hose. Uh, it's not that common, but it can happen. If you think about it, that's a pretty expensive part and there's a lot to that. So uh, a lot of times if you want to increase the security, what I generally do is put one hex locks in this stem bolt. Somebody can't loosen the stem and as a result, they can't really um, remove the fork. So uh, I can show you what that, that little uh, bolt hole, it's just, just right here. So I would put a hex locks in there. Sometimes you might find that some of the bolts, like for example, on this handlebar stem here, uh, some of the bolts are not going to be the standard uh, Allen key style bolts. And sometimes what we end up doing in the shop is replacing one of these with a bolt that can accommodate a hex locks. And that something like, like this scenario, what I would do, I'm using this uh, commuting around town. I would put one hex locks here to prevent somebody from moving the handlebars, put one on the stem, and then another kind of expensive part up front here is this headlight. And what I would do is put one more inside the bolt for the headlamp, and that would help prevent somebody from uh, easily taking the headlight off and cutting the wire. I don't know if people are thinking about that that deeply, but I think it's important to uh, consider these details. So another consideration when securing your bike is the display. This particular bike has a smartphone hub, so you actually use your cell phone as a display. But uh, some of the other bikes will have a removable display, and it's generally a good idea to take that with you when you secure the bike. Speaking of the electronic system, a lot of people have concerns about the battery specifically. Now, pretty much all the bikes that we offer have a lockable battery, and I don't really find that people are trying to steal them. I have heard in other countries where electric bikes are becoming more popular that people are getting into that a little bit, especially the ones that are not in the frame. Something like this is very difficult to actually remove the battery from the frame, but this cargo bike has external batteries on it, and technically, I guess with enough force, somebody can actually like break the battery off with the, the mounts on it. I think that it's not actually a very common thing and I don't want to get everybody so paranoid about this stuff but it's, uh, it's something to consider um, that you know if you're in a, in a very uh, high crime rate place maybe you want to take the batteries off the bike as well. Uh, some other details just while we're here and thinking about it 
you might be wondering like, oh, if I get hex lock, should I put it on like all these different parts, like put it on the crank arm or put it on the pedal or like the suspension. And I think you really got to consider one, how compatible these parts are with other bikes and two, how much effort somebody might actually go into to steal a, a, you know, a very inexpensive part or, or what it's actually worth to you. So for the most part, I try to just secure the main items like the wheels, the handlebar, stem, fork, etc., cetera, uh, seat posts. Um, but, but some of the other stuff I generally uh, don't really bother with too much. I know we covered a lot on the video. Some other things that come up quite a bit when people are talking about security is GPS tracking. Uh, we talked about GPS on our insurance video, which I mentioned earlier. Uh, GPS is a great concept, but it's not so common these days. Part of it is that there are some liability concerns with GPS. Also, uh, GPS signal is not always so great. What we found is that law enforcement won't always even pursue GPS information. So if you could say, I know where my bike is, they're not necessarily going to use that information. Uh, it's really unfortunate, but that's just the reality. And outside of that, uh, you know, as I talked about insurance, I think from my side, I would really consider that. I think that's a good way to go. And just think about, you know, where you're locking it. I try not to lock outside overnight if you can avoid it. Or if you are, are going to have to lock it up outside, say, for example, you have a cargo bike, you don't really have too many options. Putting a cover on it could really improve the security. Or there might be certain scenarios where you're locking the bike outside, you're going into a restaurant or a bar or something like that. Just be strategic about it. Uh, most people will often think like, oh, I'm just gonna lock it in like a very high uh, traffic area. That's not always such a good thing because you might have just so many people walking by, nobody's paying attention to what's actually going on. What I found, especially when you're locking near a bar or restaurant, if you lock in front of a bar, say for example, there's a, a door person at the bar like checking you know uh, IDs or something like that that's a great place because you have somebody right there or maybe you could even utilize a parking garage there's a lot of these different scenarios and it really varies depending if you're in an urban environment or not but I hope this video was helpful to you guys and uh, if you have any questions about security or thinking about your specific strategy and you want some feedback just let me know I'm always happy to help and it's, it's a challenging thing. It's a thing that nobody really wants to think about, but I think it's really important to think about. And I hope that this is a good way to kind of open your mind about some of the possibilities of how you can secure your bike and, and really protect your investment. So hope you enjoyed. I look forward to seeing you in the future. All right, see you soon.